On November 5th, 1994, at the age of 45, George Foreman had made a comeback into boxing and had worked his way up to face off against Michael Moore, the first Southpaw heavyweight, for the chance at the heavyweight title. And despite almost a 20-year age gap and a huge difference in physique, Foreman used strategy and was able to win, becoming the oldest heavyweight title champion of all time, completing his comeback and bringing himself from the bottom all the way back to the top. Today, we're going to dive into this incredible comeback on daily sports history. Welcome to Daily Sports History. I'm Ethan Reese, your guide, as you daily learn about sports history, increasing your sports knowledge. And today's trivia question is, who was the oldest heavyweight champion before George Foreman became the heavyweight champion in 1994? Now, George Foreman, if you ever heard him talk, you can tell he's a Texas boy, and he's one of six siblings. But as most boxers are, he was a troubled youth, dropped out of school when he was 15, and actually spent time as a mugger. But at the age of 16, he joined the Job Corp, which is a program that helps give education and vocational training to teenagers and young adults. And he was able to earn his GED and become a carpenter and bricklayer. But he was also able to use boxing as a way to get out his anger, his frustration, and able to work his way up as an amateur and eventually make the Olympic team in 1968, where he won gold in the heavyweight division at the Mexico Olympics. And he finished with an amateur record of 22-4 and four before making the jump to pro in 1969, winning his first fight against Donald Wellham with a three-round knockout. And he had a total of 13 fights that year, winning all of them an 11 by knockout. He was quickly climbing up the heavyweight ranks, which at the time was led by some of the greatest fighters of all time, including Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, who he would end up fighting in 1972 for the WBA heavyweight title. And he would win this by a technical knockout in the second round at just the age of 24. And he would defend this for a couple of fights until he came to one of the most famous fights of all time, facing off against Muhammad Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle. He came into the fight 40-0, and one of the best heavyweight fighters at the time. But Ali was something different, something that his style was not ready for. And he got knocked out in the eighth round, losing his title. But that doesn't mean he was out forever. He would come back the following year and continue to win, and win five straight fights, until coming up against Jimmy Young, where he lost by decision in the 12th round. And at this time, he would retire. After struggling towards this end of his career, he had become a born-again Christian and wanted to follow that into a new career path where he would become a minister for the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Houston. And he would even go to be on television programs, being a minister on the 700 Club and the Trinity Broadcast Network. But unfortunately, after 10 years away from the boxing, he had been swindled out a lot of his money and was essentially broke. And the only way he knew how to get money back was the skill he hadn't used in 10 years, boxing. Now, this is before the George Foreman Grill. So remember that. He didn't have that money coming in. He was just a minister, but he wasn't making the money he needed for his family. And he announced he would be making a comeback at the age of 38, which seemed crazy to most, as he was not in the shape he was. He was more doughy, didn't have that huge muscular physique as he had previously, but that didn't stop him from making his comeback. So he he comes back, and in his first fight, he wins by technical knockout in four rounds. And he continues to work his way up over the next three years, not losing a single fight until he gets to the point where he's able to face off against Evander Holyfield, the current heavyweight title holder, on April 9th, 1991. At this point, he is 42 years old, and Evander Holyfield is in his prime. Despite the age gap and the difference in physique, he's able to take Evander Holyfield to the 12th round, where Evander wins by decision. But Foreman shows he is still a draw and still a great fighter, even into his 40s. And then he wins his next three fights and gets to fight for the WBO heavyweight title against Tommy Morrison on June 7th, 1993, at the age of 44, 
but again loses in 12 rounds by decision. But despite this loss, he's able to come back the next year on November 5th, 1994 to face off against the current WBA heavyweight title holder, Michael Moorer, who was the first Southpaw to win the heavyweight title. And we actually covered Michael on a previous episode. We'll put that link in the description if you want to check that out. We mentioned this fight briefly. Michael comes in undefeated and only 26 years old. George is 45 years old and 299 days, almost 46. But he's already proven he can face off against Holyfield. He can face off against Morrison. He has the skills to fight. And he's not just overpowering fighters. He's using his knowledge that he's learned throughout years of fighting. Fighting greats like Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali, which he fought 20 years previously. And now he's fighting fighters that may not have even been alive when he started fighting. And because of this, you could see George Foreman's game plan. He couldn't match Moore's speed, so he saved his energy. He let Moore wear down and used his defensive style to make it round by round. And Moore just kept exerting energy and exerting energy. And through most of the fight, Moore was successful. He was landing jabs and combinations, using his footwork to stay out of the reach of Foreman and was able to take control of the fight. But after the eighth round, Foreman knew win by points. He was too far down. And now was the time for him to unleash his pressure. He had been conserving his punches, pulling punches, allowing Moore to fatigue. And he disrupted Moore's rhythm and continued to land more and more shots right on his chin, leading to the 10th round. With two minutes and three seconds left, Foreman was starting to unleash all that he had left, all that he had conserved the entire fight, and unleashed it on Moore's chin. And after so many hits to his face, Moore's legs buckled and it sent him down to the ground. And though Moore tried to get up, he couldn't beat the count, and it gave the win to George Foreman, making him the oldest heavyweight title holder of all time, a record previously held by Jersey Joe Walcott, who was only 38 years old when he won his title. And George wasn't done. He continued to fight for the next three years, retaining his heavyweight title until his last fight on November 22nd, 1997. As, as correct, his last fight was 1997. His very first fight, his very first professional fight, was 28 years earlier in 1969. And he would lose this, sh- and he would lose this fight to Shane Briggs by major decision. Now, even though this was his last fight, he did have plans to fight against Larry Holmes in 1999, where Foreman would take home $10 million and Holmes would take home $40 million. But as we all know, that fight didn't happen. For one major reason, the Slayton Inc. company, who had made this fat-reducing grill, reached out to George Foreman about being a spokesperson. George had become known, especially his second stint in boxing, for his way to speak to the media and the way to talk. After he'd been a minister, he talked so fluently and was able to get so many people to love him as just a fighter. And that's what they wanted for these grills. And basically he would earn a percentage of every grill sold. And they eventually sold over 100 million units. And for the rights to use his name, the company paid him over $100 million in 1999, which meant he didn't need to fight anymore. He was fighting to put money on the table for his family, as he had 12 kids, and he wanted to support them as best he could. And that's why he fought, and that's why he stopped, when he found another option to help make money. And George is a unique boxer because some of us may have never seen his boxing career. We just know him as the grill guy. But he was a great boxer when he was in his 20s and when he was in his 40s. And if you want to learn more about boxing, check out the Boxing SQ, where host Kurt uses his expertise in boxing and takes you through all you need to know from world championships to continuers to top promoters. He gives you the background behind all of it so you can become even more engaged in boxing. We'll put a link to the description below. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like or review wherever you're listening. It really helps me out because it puts a huge smile on my face and keeps me wanting to bring you even more daily sports history. And we'll see you tomorrow for more.
And the answer to today's trivia question, who was the oldest heavyweight champion before George Foreman became the heavyweight champion in 1994? And the answer, Jersey Joe Wolcott, who became the heavyweight champion in 1951 at the age of 38, seven years younger than when George Foreman won his title.